Designations of vacant deputy governor's position come to haunt Sonko. Of course, yesterday we had that story on uh, how the county executive committee of uh, Governor Sonko now remains just about three CECs, uh, three county ministers, uh, in the name of uh, uh, Charles Kerich, who is in charge of lands. There's a gentleman by the name Alani Gambi in charge of finance, as well as uh, someone else, I forget that name, but I'm sure to get it shortly, who. <coughs> whose contract is not certain, it's, it's not clear whether it has expired or not. And I'm just wondering, um, we saw the resignation of uh, the chief executive, uh, or rather, the CEC in charge of education on Monday, Janet Ooko, and now Governor Sonko uh, has a cabinet of uh, up to three members, including himself, then there are four without a deputy governor. And I'm just wondering, when you look at these counties and how they, they operate, how possible is it for Governor Sonko to effectively perform with such kind of a lean is it even lean? Uh, such kind of a structure? Yeah, with no, with no support at all. Mm -hmm. I think it is impossible to, to deliver with no support. The reason that uh, it has been put that, you know, uh, counties need to have executives up to 10 to support, so mm -hmm. that there is a support structure for the governor to, to deliver. I think uh, Governor Sonko needs to, uh, you know, reflect mm -hmm. on whether he's really on the right track. I mean, it's one thing to suck people left, right, and center, mm -hmm. to have a hands-on approach, mm -hmm. to visit these things yourself, but does, can, do, can, a, can a government operate in that manner? And I think the Senate should really be legislating on mm -hmm. these matters mm -hmm. as to what is the minimum? If, 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 the, if President Uhuru, for example, was to fire everybody mm -hmm. and just have three uh, ministers in his cabinet or cabinet secretaries, would we be sitting pretty saying, yeah, 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 go ahead, no. Mm -hmm. We would all be up in arms. So I think the Senate should be looking at what is the minimum mm -hmm. number of, how long, for example, I know there is a law on that is coming up on, on the matter of deputy governors, right. but how long should you <coughs> be without a deputy governor, for example, to... Mm -hmm. um, because Sonko now is in uncharted waters. Mm. Uh, nobody else is operating this way. So, and necessity is the mother of invention. We must now, because of this situation in Nairobi, look at what is the minimum number mm -hmm. of, say, uh, CCs that you can actually uh, operate with. Right. I think, I think, rather than Senate, you know, focusing on some of these things they usually focus on, you know, which are really mandates of the National Assembly, mm -hmm. they should be looking, in these 10 years of Senate now, they should really be looking at how do our, how can our counties operate effectively? Right. How can our, because you have seen this whole hullabaloo around speakers, for example, being impeached left, right, and center. We need to see these laws out. How do you impeach a speaker? Is it do the do the MCAs just decide that because you're not giving me a trip or you're not you know speaking in my language you're going to I'm going to t send you out and that is the end? Mm -hmm. um, I think Senate has really its work cut out okay. on these matters and, and and without necessarily speaking too much specifically about Nairobi, mm -hmm. I think there is there is need for for um, for Senate to look at legislation around some of these issues because sure. this you know janet said janet is a renowned educationist herself you know but she said you know you're living under constant threat and intimidation you cannot perform mm -hmm. is that how we want our counties to operate maybe there are several others operating in the same manner but i you know you have the 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 deputy whip of the or deputy majority leader <laughs> of the <laughs> deputy whip of the senate he yes. can tell us about why they they Mm. They focus too much on roles of the National Assembly <laughs> rather than actually delivering on some of these very critical issues. Right. Before you do that, I just want to <coughs> get it clear that uh, Charles Kerich is the CEC in charge of lands, is still in office. Anani Gambi, CEC in charge of finance, is still in office. Mohamed Dagane, Rhodes, is still in office. And of course, they're acting uh, uh, for uh, or other different, uh, different other departments, other different departments. Laru Ambua, who is uh, in charge of devolution, his contract is uncertain, bearing in mind that it expired in November. It was extended for one month. So uh, we don't know whether he's still in office um, regularly or what will happen. Of course, uh, Governor Sunko has uh, since January 2018 lost a number of people, including Polika Pigade, who was the deputy governor. Uh, he resigned in January 2018. Veska Kangogo, who was in charge of health, was suspended after he was, she was alleged to have uh, insubordinated the governor in the Pumwani Hospital saga. Peter Washira also left the institution, uh, or rather the government. He was in charge of agriculture. Dr. Hitan Majevda uh, 
left uh, after she uh, after the doctor was sacked. Then Dan Vas Makori, who was in charge of finance, was fired in April 2018. Emma Mokuhi, environment, uh, the contract was never renewed, and Janet Oko resigned on 7th of January. And uh, picking from what she was saying about uh, Janet Oko complaining that uh, uh, the, the environment is not pretty uh, conducive to work under Governor Sunko, I'm just wondering, how then do you help um, this institution so that despite or uh, without paying regard uh, to the personality of the person who is in office, how do you ensure that counties continue to run smoothly? Because it's not every, every other time that you'll find a personality that uh, gets on well with, the, with, with their sub subjects. You know, uh, the, the, the governance structure of this country is what is called a pure presidential system. And that pure presidential system is also uh, escalated downwards to the position of the governor. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm aware of court decision on that matter, where CCs have gone to the labor court seeking to contest a dismissal by a governor. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there is what is called the pleasure doctrine. Mm -hmm. the, pleasure, the pleasure doctrine provides that uh, uh, cabinet ministers mm -hmm. in the national government serve at the place of the president. So mm -hmm. the same principle also applies in the county government that CECs serve at the pleasure of, of, the governor. of the governor. So my point is also... But now they're saying they're under pressure. Well, the point is I think uh, they need to be under pressure to perform. <laughs> I know some people go into public service to go and steal. And for me, I support the idea that they need to be under pressure. Uh, to me, that's how you can only ensure government works. If you allow people to do their own thing, mm -hmm. they are going to mess up the government. On, on the issue concerning Sonko, mm -hmm. I hold the view that we need to give him time. Uh, it is too early to judge his uh, administration. Mm -hmm. I think it's also fair that you allow him uh, maybe, let's say, one, two, sorry, two years mm -hmm. or three years so that we can be able to, to assess and compare that, him that, with that, That's fair, Senator. But look at this. It's, uh, it's been since uh, August 2017 when that election for governorship was held. It's now how many, how many months? Uh, going to 12 plus 4 plus 1 is uh, 17 months. The governor has no cabinet, essentially. Okay, there's no minimum according to the law, but uh, so many of these, just four people acting in all the other departments. How much time can we allow, bearing in mind that service delivery does not wait? Well, uh, well, from where I sit, if I'm not wrong, there was an advertisement over the dailies. People were supposed yes. to apply uh, for Back those positions. Back in October last year, yes. So maybe the process for recruitment, for replacement is still ongoing. Okay. So yeah, but I think it's there. important. It's very, very important for um, Senator Irungu to talk about a legislative framework yes, I agree. around Kaka, some of yes. these issues. Because you, we can't just be, we can't be dealing with, you know, personally, and that's the question you're asking. You, it, you cannot be dependent on, am I a benevolent person, or am I a rough person, or am I, without a proper legislative framework. And this is where I think our Senate is failing. Our Senate is failing because they would mm -hmm. rather focus on things that the that the national assembly is already dealing with they'd even they'd rather even reinvestigate something that has already been yes done, can i comment on that than, can, can i than, comment on that rather than focus on their primary duty because this is now oh, we're going to 10 years of the senate yes, the can issues I of on that? basic legis basic legislation as to how our counties should run mm -hmm. should already be out here so i think yes can i comment on that there's well, a big uh, problem there well, uh, uh, the truth is, uh, there is a lot of good work that the Senate is doing which is not being highlighted by the media because it is you who decide what to highlight. Mm -hmm. I say that because it is true, we need to address structural problems mm -hmm. in the counties. Mm -hmm. You look at the County Governments Act, there have been several proposed amendments. Mm -hmm. Some of them, by the way, have even passed Senate. They are lying the National Assembly, mm -hmm. seeking to address some of these lacunas. Mm -hmm. One of the lacunas, for instance, is uh, mm, uh, a speaker's position, she has commented that issue. Right. In myself, mm -hmm. I have made a proposal that uh, once you impeach a speaker, mm -hmm. you have to come to the Senate for ratification, just like the position of the governor. Mm -hmm. You create a two-tire system. Sure. The, that proposal is still being processed. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, for instance, I've realized one of the reasons why governors are so powerful, no one can be able to oversight them, particularly the, the MCAs, Whereas it is their primary mandate to do that, it is because the, all resources usually go to the governor's mm -hmm. seat. Right. So to address that, I've come up with a bill that is seeking 
to disperse that money to the wards. Right. Because to you address the problem of discrimination of wards. Okay. So again, that is being processed by the Senate. Okay. Apart from my proposals, other senators have also come up with other areas that they seek to cure various lacunas which exist in the county government system. They are those I think proposals are good, right. but but we need legislation. We need results. To be honest, we need we need mm -hmm. we need these laws done mm. and dusted and out. You know, so we don't we don't. I think proposals are good. No, so but sorry. We need I, to I, have I, laws. <laughs> the point is, <laughs> yes, eh? as you conclude, yes. The point is, mm -hmm. uh, there are laws. You know, a law before it becomes law or a bill, it, it, it has to be a proposal. It's a process. It's a process. Now, what I'm saying, when I say we need law, is we need these things to be Prioritized. assented to by the president. No, okay. in fact, the uh, vast majority of them are in, in, in the National Assembly. No, I don't it, think it so. It is that's Duane that's who has failed to process okay, them. Of there course, uh, we'll look into that to, to exactly get the correct position or the exact position of that. But I can already foresee a situation where you have a conflict between the Senate and the County Assemblies because you cannot say that an official who is hired by the, uh, the County Assembly members will, ha will now have uh, some sort of a security of tenure that uh, the decisions of the assembly will be checked by the Senate, yet they are the people who hired the speaker. But of course, that's a discussion that we can have on another day. Just to highlight once again is that uh, the county government of Nairobi has no governor and has no six uh, CECs, and of course, uh, sorry, has, has no, no deputy, deputy governor. governor. My, my bad. Has no deputy governor and has no six uh, uh, CECs, and also they don't have a substantive speaker for the county assembly. So how they are performing or they are able to effectively uh, carry out their mandate is... Uh, I guess that you can make. Now, I want to just look at some of the feedback as you wind up. Um, someone is saying that uh, if CECs are being mistreated, you can imagine what medics are going through in the hands of these governors. Someone else says that um, can Honorable Wanga also comment on the state of her own Homo Bay County before removing the specs in Governor Sonko's eyes? Well, I don't know what specs you've seen in your county. Uh, Jen from Nakuru is saying that it's not about reducing fees of doctors, but it is fighting corruption and facing the, the, the corruption that is facing uh, health sector uh, for Kenyans. Um, then I want to look at uh, Twitter, what you've been saying. Uh, someone says that. Uh, is it possible for Gladys Wanga to have her debate, her debate from start to end without mentioning DP William Russo? If Wanga and whoever wants the DP want to be DP, let them wait for 2022. Mentioning Russo names here and there is not development. Wow. I only mentioned uh, the DP's name mm -hmm. within the context of the tweet that was put up, where the Honorable Gujiri Wambugu mm -hmm. was asking about the development trips mm -hmm. that have been to Mount Kenya, mm -hmm. where is the development? I think that is a valid question. So it's not about 2022. It's just about asking, really, mm -hmm. if you have been launching development programs. And this is the question that the person tweeting should answer. If you have been developing, uh, launching development programs over the last year, mm -hmm. and suddenly now you're saying there, there is no development, right. then the question is, what have you been launching? I think that is a valid question. It's not, uh, it's not unfair. Right. To ask. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. So thank you so much, uh, Gladys Wanga, me a member of parliament for Homa Bay, the woman representative in that county, as well as Senator Irongo Kangata from Oranga. Thank you so much for making time for us on Daybreak. Of course, the conversations continue on those very different matters. Up next, we'll be talking to former Justice Minister and, of course, uh, the NAC Kenya Party leader, Martha Karua, will be talking to us on the state of the nation, what from her position, from her view, she thinks we are doing right or not doing right, and what our priorities should actually be in 2019. So stay tuned. You can text us on 22422. You can tweet us at uh, Citizen TV Kenya at Sam Gituku. The hashtag to use is Daybreak with your questions and concerns that you may have to raise. Uh, but that all that is after this show break. <laughs>